योगः कर्मसु कौशलम हेलो माय सेल्फ नीता शाह फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ मैथमेटिक्स गुजरात यूनिवर्सिटी आई एम हियर टू से समथिंग अबाउट ऑसिलेशंस एंड वेव्स फ्रॉम मैथमेटिकल पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू कंटेंट इज we'll see what is simple harmonic motion energy in simple harmonic motion some of the oscillating systems damped oscillations driven oscillations and lastly resonance so first i need to start with what is wave it is a correlated collection of oscillations for example a transverse wave traveling along a string each point in the string oscillates back and forth in the transverse direction but not along the direction of the string if you consider sound wave each air molecule oscillates back and forth in the longitudinal direction that is the direction in which the sound is traveling here the molecules don't have any net motion in the direction of sound propagation so we next we have water waves here each water molecule also undergoes oscillatory motion and again there is no overall net motion so we need to say that an understanding of oscillation is required for understanding of waves how oscillation occurs that will give me some knowledge about the waves okay see here the figure most of the time when uh, fairs are getting organized in, in village as a well and a person is moving in a well with a motor bike so if you see the first figure if bike is at the bottom then it is at stable equilibrium point but when it is in the peak side one can say then it is unstable equilibrium point so this generates simple harmonic motion when the restoring force so i, I should know what is restoring force the force directed towards a stable equilibrium point is proportional to the displacement from the equilibrium so what exactly happens in simple harmonic motion this motion is repetitive through a central equilibrium point symmetric city is observed and maximum displacement that is symmetry of maximum displacement is observed in simple harmonic motion generally we call it as a jam the period of each cycle is constant because we said it is getting repeated after every time interval so we have period of each cycle to be constant force causing the motion is directed towards the equilibrium point and obviously with negative sign this is just to have the standard form 
So I can say that force is directly proportional to the displacement from equilibrium. Okay, so I have acceleration is equal to minus omega square into displacement. Let us see a simple harmonic motion. Okay. On the right side, we have a, on the left side, we have a fixed uh, instrument or wall, I can say, a string at the low, opposite end is attached with the mass M. Okay. And uh, we have frictionless force, that is frictionless surface. And you can see each one is a periodic uh, motion. Okay? That is, they are repeating themselves symmetrically. And uh, x denotes the distance at which uh, equilibrium is attained. So I have restoring force F is equal to minus k into x. This uh, small x, this both are x's are same. X stands for displacement. Okay, now instead of one force, let us have the two springs with uh, different amplitude. So, first body is at uh, 5 centimeter away, and second one is at 10 centimeter, and we have here as an equilibrium point. Obviously, uh, um, the system uh, surface is uh, frictionless. Otherwise, we also have to take care of uh, external forces. But at present, we don't want to go with that. Now, this two spring with different amplitude, I can uh, have it in the graph paper. First one is object one, which I said at uh, five centimeters. So wave starts with five centimeter. And second one's object was at 10 centimeter. So wave starts with uh, 10. And see, you can uh, see the periodicity. Okay. So what is the period of oscillation? Capital T denotes period of oscillation. And it is given by 2 pi upon omega. And omega also depends upon mass and constant. So omega is given by root k by m. This omega defines angular frequency of the oscillation. Okay. At what? And uh, k is spring constant. So t is period of oscillation, which depends upon spring constant and mass of the block. And angular frequency is w, which is given by square root k by m. Here, we have a spring, say A is the amplitude of the motion, then at, I have divided the x-axis into three components, equilibrium point that is x is equal to zero on plus side and minus side, so plus A and minus A, uh, we have a maximum force then velocity when x is equal to minus a velocity is zero when x is equal to zero that is at equilibrium we'll get the maximum velocity and when x is equal to plus a once again velocity is zero uh, here k defines kinetic energy and u defines potential energy so total energy e is given by uh, sorry, total energy E at x is equal to minus A, which is uh, potential energy, it is 1 by 2 kA square. Similarly, at equilibrium point, we have uh, kinetic energy maximum, that is half mv square. And similarly, at x is equal to A, we have potential energy maximum, which is half kA square. So this is uh, notation, equilibrium point, 
at x is equal to 0. Acceleration, this capital A is nothing but small a, huh? be careful. Uh, acceleration is 0. And when it is stretched to its maximum, spring is stretched to its maximum, a will be maximum. Uh, velocity at two different points I have marked. At the uh, left side, that is at x is equal to minus a, velocity 0 at the end points and maximum at equilibrium points. Now we'll say something about in terms of uh, equilibrium point. You have just released the spring. Okay. In that case, the uh, time period will be different. Okay. So this is first point is uh, first graph. As I said, it is equilibrium point and it has a phase t by 4, t by 2, 3, t by 4 and t. t is the cycle time. Then uh, second figure, you have just released the spring. So I said at t equal to 0. Now you can see it has slightly shifted period is slightly shifted and this is when at t equal to t by 4 okay we have simple harmonic motion similarly uh, at t equal to half t spring we have a periodic motion at 3 by 4 i have a periodic motion and uh, lastly, at t equal to capital T. Okay. Now here, we have one cycle or one period. In general, we call it a period. Okay. So if you look at the first black one, to, uh, I mean topmost. So it says uh, t is the period of the motion. And in that case, displacement is given by x is equal to a cos omega t. Now, classical mechan uh, calculus says that this position is maximum at a. Okay. Red one is velocity. That is, I just have to differentiate x and uh, differentiation of cos omega t is sin omega t and uh, omega x and similarly the third part uh, is once again you differentiate velocity you will get acceleration and acceleration is maximum when it is omega square into a so starting with the displacement you can find out when velocity is maximum and when acceleration is maximum okay so I'm just summarizing it here. A simple harmonic oscillator can be described mathematically by x of t is equal to s a cos omega d, that is displacement. Vt is dx by dt. So different a is constant, differentiate cos omega d with respect to t, that is minus sin omega t into omega. And once again, differentiate velocity, you will get acceleration. That is minus a omega square cos omega t. So, I have amplitude of the node motion. That is the maximum displacement from the equilibrium to be capital T. And uh, maximum velocity is a omega. Maximum acceleration to be a omega square. So this is what I once again have it in the diagram that is linear motion and circular functions. Circular functions are cos omega t or sin omega t. Okay. Now here once again, I'm writing the, in a, I'm, I'm the saying in, uh, or I can giving in the circle. That is, uh, it, at t equal to 0, when displacement is, uh, when ang uh, angle is theta, okay, at t equal to 0, this is the motion. When y is equal to a sine theta, theta is omega t, okay, and uh, then you continue, okay. 
that is sin omega t and cos omega t unit circle with center 0 0 and if you want radi a unit circle radius is 1 so in that case a will turn out to be 1 okay okay so circular motion I, I i need to know what is circular motion and how can i get from the two linear simple harmonic motion so what it says is that circular motion is superposition of two linear simple harmonic motion that are 90 degree out of phase that is they are uh, having a phase of 90 degree with each other let us have it here i have a circular motion okay uh, delta and omega t and total deviation is theta body is moving with a velocity v and angular velocity is v by a now i'm writing this in terms of another one so at this point this is uh, angle theta once again i will have angle so i'm superposing two motions simple harmonic motions okay so v sin theta and v cos theta v sin theta is x axis sorry v sin theta is y axis and v cos theta is x axis omega is angular uh, velocity so same one linear simple harmonic motion i have superimposed two SHO and uh, what the circular motion in terms of sine and cosine and uh, the advantage of uh, having a circular motion is because we are more very much familiar with sine and cosine function and its periodicity because both of them are two pi periodic so it is easy to visualize the periodic motion okay next part comes uh, energy when a floor on which uh, body is moving is frictionless, then total force is zero okay, along x-axis. So what I can say that sigma fx is equal to minus kx or mass into acceleration in x direction. And classical form of simple harmonic motion is acceleration at any instant of time t is given by minus omega square into displacement that is x into t okay. k by m root k by m is omega so i have here omega square so i have equation of energy which is sum of kinetic energy and potential energy kinetic energy is half mv square at any instant of time t and potential energy is half k x square t once again, here x is displacement at any instant of time t. Okay, so let us see it here. On the top here, I have a spring which is stretched on the frictionless uh, surface and mass m is at it. That spring is uh, stretched with mass m. So at x is equal to 0, we have energy that is E. And at any other instant, that is plus a or minus a, I have a potential energy half k x square. Okay. Similarly, I also have um, because body is uh, moving, so I also have a uh, e total that is uh, half k a square okay. due to acceleration. Okay. So first figure is about uh, springs potential energy second sorry second one is uh, springs total energy that consists of both okay now the above figure can be approximated by simple harmonic motion because it represents parabola i can i can uh, say parabola approximating u near the point of stable equilibrium that is at equal to zero and similarly second one can also be 
represented by a race approximation. Okay? It defines uh, actual potential energy function and uh, matching parabola I can obtain. So lower one is approximation of the upper uh, figure that is approximating simple harmonic motion. Okay, here first part that is the top one is just the stretching of the string that is the motion is started with and second one is for uh, so that is given by kt is equal to half mb squared t and second one is uh, potential energy which is half k x squared t and total turns out to be the last one that is uh, e total sum of uh, potential and kinetic energy now let us see one example the period of oscillation of an object in an ideal mass spring system so frictionless is 0 0.50 second and the amplitude is 5 centimeter i want to find out the speed at the equilibrium point obviously at equilibrium point displacement is zero that means x is zero so i have a total energy which is sum of kinetic energy and potential energy so half mv square plus half kx square but x is zero so total energy is half mv square now e is constant so v is equal to velocity should be at maximum one and that we have already seen in the previous slide that is a omega omega is nothing but 2 pi by t 2 pi is uh, approximately 12.6 sorry 2 pi is 3.14 and time is known that is uh, 0 0.50 that is already given so we have omega to be 12.6 radians per second so now i can find out what is the uh, velocity that is a into omega and it is given that amplitude is 5 centimeter so 5 into 12.6 radians per second will give me velocity of the oscillating body to be 62.8 centimeter per second let us have one more example the diagram of a speaker has a mass 50 gram and responds to a signal of 2 kilohertz by moving back and forth so we have a simple harmonic motion with an amplitude of 1.8 into 10 raised to minus 4 meter at that frequency what is the maximum force acting on the diaphragm that is what we want to find out what is the maximum force and what is the mechanical energy of the diaphragm so first we want maximum force okay so some of the forces is f maximum which is m into a maximum but a maximum that is acceleration maximum is a omega square and uh, omega is 2 pi f so we have m a 2 pi f whole square okay. and uh, m is given to us a is given to us f is given to us so i after putting um, plugging all the values i get maximum force to be of 1400 newton next part we wanted to find the mechanical energy since mechanical energy is conserved we have e is equal to k maximum or u maximum u maximum is what half k a square and k maximum is half kv square obviously at v to be maximum so k maximum is half k v velocity at uh, 
maximum velocity that is at e omega square we have all the constants with us m a and f so k maximum is 0 0.13 joules because we wanted only mechanical energy okay. one more example the displacement of an object is simple harmonic motion given by y of t is equal to 8 sin omega t where omega is 1.5 sec one radians per second question is what is the frequency of the oscillations if we compare y of t with a sin omega t i have a is equal to 8 omega is equal to 1.57 and we know that frequency is given by w upon 2 pi w is 1.57 2 pi pi is 3.14 so we have frequency to be 0 0.250 hertz now the period of the motion t is 2 pi by omega omega is known to me 1.57 radians per second and 2 pi is known to me pi is 22 by 7 so we get t to be 4 seconds so x maximum which is at a okay it is 8 centimeter maximum velocity we can get by a omega that is 12.6 centimeter per second and uh, maximum acceleration which is a omega square value of a is known to us that is 8 and uh, omega is also known to us so, so plugging the values we get 19.7 centimeter per second square as the maximum acceleration now what about the gravity figure itself says that when a mass spring system is oriented vertically it will exhibit simple harmonic equation with the same period and frequency as a horizontally placed system so even if i change by 90 degree frequency or period will not change that is they remain unaffected now, I am in a position to define simple pendulum. Okay. Simple pendulum is constructed by attaching a mass. I have this as a fix. Attaching a mass, say, of M to a string. Thin rod or a light string. We also assume that the amplitude of oscillation, that is when you lay this, uh, amplitude is, of oscillation is very small s is very small newton's second law says that f phi is minus mv sine phi here uh, gravitational force acceleration due to gravity will work and uh, that is m a phi and uh, force along radial direction that is along radius is t that is here tension t minus m cos phi because this is the force t minus m cos phi they have to nullify each other and that is given by m into v square by r r is the radius or length of the string if i assume that phi to be very small say less much much less than one radian then sine phi and phi are approximately equal and cos phi is equal to one and that simplifies my formulas so i can get the angular frequency of oscillations as sigma m phi which is minus mg sine phi but the uh, first comment says phi is much much sine phi is equal to phi so we have m a phi uh, which is nothing but m l alpha yeah. 
and uh, so I should know what is alpha here. Now here using uh, trigonometry, I can say L alpha is equal to minus G by L into sine phi. Once again, I am saying that sine phi is equal to phi under the assumption that angle is very small. We have alpha is equal to minus G by L into phi. And omega is equal to root G by L. So, I have a formula for period of oscillation that is T is equal to 2 pi upon omega, which is 2 pi under root L by G. Let us apply to one of the question. We have a clock. Obviously, this everybody has seen. A clock has a pendulum that performs one full sp swing every one second. Full swing is from right to left maximum. The object at the end of the string, that is the knob, okay, uh, is having a weight 10 newton. Then what is the length of the pendulum? Okay, from the previous slide, we have formula that time period is given by 2 pi under root L by G. And we want to find out the length. So I can use simple mathematics, square it, square the first formula T equal to 2 pi under root L by G and uh, try to get L which is G T square upon 4 pi square. Now I have value of G that is 9.8 meter per second square. Time is given to us as 1 second and pi is a known constant. So L is equal to 0 0.25 meter that is the length of the pendulum should be 0 0.25 meter now let us have the physical pendulum okay. it is any rigid object that is free to oscillate about some fixed axis this is a body okay. the period of oscillation of a physical pendulum is not necessarily the same as that of the simple pattern of what we had seen in the earlier example. Here, the period turns out to be 2 pi under root L by mgd. D is the distance. Okay? M is the mass and G is acceleration due to gravity. Now, if the same figure, that is the uh, right side figure, I have a zoom part. So, this is how it looks like. Okay. And uh, I is the moment of inertia about the given axis. In fact, this I is sum of two inertias. First one is moment of inertia due to rod. And second one is moment of inertia due to this and some of this will give me moment of inertia about the axis. Here the mass m is also sum of mass of the rod and mass of the disc. Distance from the axis to the center of mass of the rod and disc. You can as you can see it on the left side. D is the distance. Okay. Now, if this oscillation does not perform a periodicity, then we have damp oscillations. The A figure is stretch and then left. Then we observe the wave pattern as given in figure B. You can see that initially the wave was moving with altitude A0 or amplitude A0 and then it goes on, amplitude goes on decreasing and that is what we call damp oscillation. That when 
dissipative force such as friction are negligible are not negligible that is a friction force also x the amplitude of oscillation will decrease with time that is what i say it, it amplitude is decreasing and such oscillations are called damp oscillations so we need to know when we will have damp oscillations now for that i have i have a second order linear differential equation that is m d square x by dt square plus b dx by dt plus m omega square x is equal to 0 x stands for displacement okay. and x of t that is the same x is given by a0 e raised to minus t by 2 tau into cos omega t plus delta now this expression that is omega is nothing but omega 0 square root 1 minus square of b upon 2m omega 0 but omega 0 is same as what we had in the previous discussion also that is root k by m tau is m by b then this gives me critical uh, value of b to be 2m omega 0 and this critical value defines the nature of the oscillation if b is greater than bc we will have over damping that is the system returns to equilibrium without oscillating and large values of the damping the return to the equilibrium slower so more the damping slower the getting back to equilibrium is at a lower rate when b equal to bc we call it uh, critical damp and the system return to equilibrium as quickly as possible without oscillating this is often desired for the damping of systems such as doors that is what we have in terms of door closers okay under damping obviously now we are left with b less than bc here the system oscillates with a slightly different frequency than the undamped case and i had already shown in the previous figure okay and with the amplitude gradually decreasing to zero okay then we have force oscillations that is external force exerts on the system and external force is f0 cos omega d left side is the same what we had in the damping force okay here d square x by dt square is acceleration so first term is ma second term is because of friction third term is because of spring and the external force is applied so we have force oscillations x is a cos omega t minus delta and with some calculation i can get close form of a in terms of uh, force applied that is f0 mass omega and omega 0 and uh, as an intermediate step i will get uh, 10 delta also and that can give me how much uh, deviation i will have in terms of angles once again once again we have the same equation i'm uh, repeating at resonance v and f0 are in the same phase so vx is uh, x is known to us a cos uh, omega t minus delta so vx dx by dt is minus omega a cos omega t minus delta and uh, if we have in the same phase then this delta will turn out to be pi by 2 and sine of theta minus pi by 2 is cos minus cos omega t but we already have negative sign outside so velocity in the direction of x axis 
is W A W into A cos omega T. So I am in a position to define energy, which is half m omega square A square. That gives me E zero exponential raised to minus T by tau. Tau is m by b. E zero is nothing but half m omega square A zero square. And that gives me Q, that is the energy, to be equal to W0 into tau, and tau is m by b. So Q is equal to W0 m by b. Here, in terms of energy, we have big damping and heavy damping. Q is omega 0 upon delta omega and the, in the dissipative in the system represented by B, I already said while defining second order differential equation, keeps the amplitude from going to infinity because we cannot have a amplitude going to infinity. So B helps in controlling the system. So that is what I wanted you to know about simple harmonic motion and hence uh, its uh, different uh, damping, over damping and critical damping in terms of uh, dissipative force. Thank you.